Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this is Whiskey Makes Me Happy Hour. I'm Mark Penelbury uh, from Whiskey Brother, and this is episode number 10. Uh, this is now the 10th week in a row that we bring in you these live streams. Uh, I think that's a nice accomplishment. Uh, for that, I have poured some Glendronach 16 uh, in my glass. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in and coming back and watching again. Uh, we have a wonderful special guest today, um, but more about that in a few moments. Um, I just want to say, uh, you may notice, depending on how you view these uh, these live streams, um, I have a bit of kind of a warped bubble uh, vibe going on today. Uh, I've had some technical issues of my own, as happens with these things, and uh, I've got a, somebody else's webcam, and it's giving me a nice kind of bubble effect. It's not just the, 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 the vast quantities of alcohol you've consumed. Uh, there's, a, there's a legitimate kind of technical thing at play here. Uh, I'm hoping that when uh, Dave Broom, our special guest for today, joins me up on screen, uh, it will kind of cut out some of my screen and uh, it won't feel maybe so unsteady. Um, this is our 10th episode, uh, and this will also be our last episode for now. Um, I can't hear the audience, but I hope there's kind of a, a, a sigh of disappointment across the audience. Um, we will continue to uh, to bring some live streams, so we, we're not kind of just, uh, we're not stopping that, but we will stop Whiskey Makes Me Happy Hour in this particular guise and format, uh, at least for the next few weeks. Um, uh, you know, when lockdown was announced, we were eager to jump online, so we were rather rushed to do it. Um, I think we've, we've, we've kind of, we've done something that's been really enjoyable and hopefully very informative. Thankfully, we've had wonderful guests uh, on every episode so far. Um, and uh, these are individuals that generally are not, you know, in South Africa or some of them have never been here. Some of them haven't been here for, for several years. Uh, so it's been wonderful to kind of connect South Africa with, uh, with some of these other, uh, with these whiskey individuals across the world. Um, we won't stop that. Uh, but in terms of this format, we, we, we do plan to go off air for a few weeks. Um, and the plan is to be back within three to four weeks. Um, and just be a little bit more focused about our content and what, we, what we're offering to you. There's been lots of great questions, uh, lots of discussion topics and points that we can't always you know, fully unpack um, because we have special guests and time is limited. Uh, I, the plan was always kind of you know, a happy hour and um, you know, I don't think, well, I'm not, I don't think, I know that there hasn't been one episode that has been under an hour or at least even under an hour 20. Um, so um, we're gonna go off air and then you know, just kind of watch the space we will be back. Unfortunately, you're not done looking at me yet, uh, but the plan is definitely to bring on some more of the Whiskey Brother team, um, as well as then we will we will keep up um, the special guests. I think it's been brilliant. Um, we're very thankful for their time and their knowledge. Um, but at the moment, with kind of with lockdown across the globe starting to ease to some degree, uh, a lot of these individuals are, are busy again or back at work, and uh, doing something weekly is, is not really sustainable. So, um, yeah, just watch the space. We'll let you know. Um, I'm not going to kind of belabor anything, uh, anything else too much. At the, at, at the end of my time with Dave Broom, I will make a few other announcements uh, and uh, I'll answer a few other questions. For now, very much, very keen to get started with, uh, with Dave. Um, I, I said this before, but you know, when we started this, and again, we, 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 we jumped on it quite quickly, which I think was great, but it was very much around, okay, great, who do we want to speak to? Whiskey fans, uh, who's on our list? Uh, Dave Broom is always at the top of my list. And um, it took a few weeks, but very, very happy and, uh, and honored that uh, he is taking time out to join us. Um, I guess we're, you know, we're in a, I want to say, a fortunate position uh, in that we can reach out to the individuals that are near the top of our list. And, and let's be honest, there's dozens and dozens, if not hundreds, of wonderful whiskey people across the globe that we would love to speak to, that we would love to, uh, you know, drink a whiskey with and, uh, and have their thoughts shared with, with the South African whiskey audience. Uh, you know, uh, but I guess unfortunately time is limited, uh, and uh, I think in the last ten weeks at least we've we've done quite well and uh, going out on a high with with Dave Broom. Um, if uh, for anyone who doesn't know Dave Broom, first of all, shame on you. Uh, but secondly, uh, Dave is a whiskey writer. Um, he is Glaswegian. Um, currently resides in, in the south coast of England. Um, Dave uh, is, is, is a name you should know. Dave uh, has written some fantastic books, uh, and over and above his books, he is uh, a contributor, a speaker, a talker, a teacher uh, of not only whiskey, but drinks in general. Um, he has been a freelance drinks specialist for or since 1995, which if we do the maths, it's almost 25 years ago. Um, and although we see Dave's name on many of his books and in various publications, uh, I think there's a lot that Dave is involved in within the whiskey industry that we don't get to see as kind of just consumers. 
Um, he's published almost a dozen books, uh, including The Way of the Whiskey, Whiskey Manual, uh, along with the Gin and Rum Manual, if you're, if you're that way inclined, uh, and the brilliant World Atlas of Whiskey. Uh, they wrote for Whiskey Magazine, which I think everyone will most likely know as well, for 17 years. Uh, and then I think I want to say most recently, but a website that many whiskey individuals were, were, were kind of visiting weekly, uh, including myself, was scotchwhiskey.com. Sadly, that website has uh, shut its doors, I believe it was last year or so. Um, all content is still there, and there's some brilliant content, but um, it is not something that is now active and, and kind of being added to. Uh, Dave was an editor and a writer for scotchwhiskey.com. In addition, he is a master of the Quake uh, and a Kentucky Colonel. Um, the Kentucky Colonel status awarded uh, very much to individuals who've kind of championed bourbon and Kentucky whiskey and been involved in American whiskey. Um, and uh, yeah, very happy and very excited to have Dave here today. Um, and uh, we plan to talk to him about uh, things he's working on and um, uh, anything else that you know kind of that's in the pipelines and get his thoughts on a few matters, uh, a few whiskey items. Uh, just trying to see quickly if I can find Dave online. Uh, if you have any questions for myself or Dave, uh, please just post them in the ask a question section. Uh, I already see a few. Um, I already see a few questions popping up, which is great. We'll we'll address those. Um, I see a Dave. I'm about to invite a Dave up on screen. I hope it's the right Dave. Uh, to the Dave who gets the the prop to join me on screen. If you're not Dave Broom, uh, be great to have you on next week. Uh, but it looks like this individual is accepting, and I'm hoping it's Dave Room. Hello. Yes. <laughs> Dave, how are you? Can you, Dave? Can you hear me? Oh no. Uh, can everyone else hear me? Um, hello, Dave. Uh, I, you can see me. Oh dear, technical issues. Uh, Dave, I, uh, Dave, I can hear you. I can can hear you. You frozen? Oh, uh, I can hear you. Dave, and if you can hear me, uh, give me a wave. Okay. So I heard Dave talking, um, but now he's frozen on my screen. Dave, um, if you don't mind. Uh, Apologies, I'm sure we can overcome this. Uh, if you can just maybe uh, hit uh, refresh or um, in terms of the URL, just just revisit the URL and hopefully that will kind of kick uh, kick this into action. Uh, you are waiting for Dave to reconnect. Okay, great. And close and close the video. Uh, it, it seems to be uh, it seems to be a regular for us, folks. So thank you very much for your patience. Uh, I'm going to quickly just check if uh, all Dave reconnects. And we can invite him up on screen. Um, and I think he's not currently on screen. So uh, I'm going to maybe just assume that Dave is having some, well, safe to assume Dave is having some technical issues. Uh, let's give him a few moments, and uh, then we can invite him back. Hopefully, he'll just need to reconnect, and we'll be fine. Um, if, you, uh, if you're a regular of the show, you will be uh, very familiar with the fact that this has happened, uh, unfortunately, more times than we would like. Um, Dave says he's connected. Brilliant. So, Dave, I'm about to invite you back up on screen, uh, and the invite has been sent. Uh, for those who have joined us last week, we were meant to have Gordon Bruce on from uh, Knock Dew Distillery from Anarch Single Malt. Uh, we had him on for a few minutes. It didn't go so well. Uh, we're going to bank that for uh, for one of our future episodes, so we haven't written that off. Um, and I think this is one of the reasons we actually want to go there for a few weeks, test a few other platforms. Um, I think you know being able to broadcast on on YouTube and Facebook Live uh, is a better way to go. Uh, therefore, if there's an issue on one platform, then everyone still has access on the others. Uh, Dave is accepting and connecting, so we'll just give that a few more minutes. There's no rush here. I mean, it's it's Friday. Um, alcohol sales are prohibited on Friday, so where else are you going to go? Uh, plenty of uh, plenty of time to just have a dram. Uh, with that being said, slanja and cheers. Uh, at least I can see people can hear me. Um, unfortunately, I'm sure we can make this work. Uh, Dave and I did a test yesterday. It all went fine after a browser switch. Um, so um, I think we can get this right. Thank you for your patience. In the meantime, tell me what you're drinking. 
uh, tell Dave where you're from and uh, in, the, in the chat section and pour yourself another whiskey. Uh, Dave, if you can hear me, I'm just going to stop that invitation and give you another one. So um, inviting you back up now, you should have a prompt on your screen. Uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, let's find. Let's uh, let's see what what, ha what comes of this. Uh, I am drinking the Glendronach 16 Platinum. Uh, I think everyone, at least if you're generally a Glendronach fan, you'll be familiar with this. Not produced anymore. Uh, we were quite fortunate in that the Glendronach 16 Platinum was generally only available in South Africa, so almost a South African exclusive. Um, at the time, the distillery was owned uh, by Billy Walker, a famous whiskey producer, um, as well as two other individuals who happen to be South African. Um, I'm going to reprompt Dave to join me. We're going to get this right. So uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, there is no way I'm finishing uh, this, this series of live streams without getting Dave Broom up on stage, particularly since he graciously agreed to join us uh, and be our guest. Um, we'll just uh, hope Dave has a nice stiff drink in his glass. Uh, I'm sure he's, uh, he's much more of a consummate professional than I am, and uh, I'm sure he, he Fortunately, he has experienced this before. Um, I see I'm, okay, I'm going to reprompt. Dave, I am reprompting you. Um, sorry about any issues. I think uh, if you can, maybe just, again, worst case, uh, just close the browser and then you know, drop the URL back in, uh, and that should help you shake off any cobwebs. I appreciate you probably doing that, uh, but let's just see what happens. So I'm going to cancel that. Find Dave again and invite Dave. Okay, Dave is not live, so I think that hopefully means he's just refreshing his browser. Uh, I'm just going to, in the, in the meantime, I'm going to answer one quick question. Um, we've got a uh, question. No, no, I'm actually not going to do the questions. I feel I can't answer the questions quick enough, and hopefully Dave will be with us uh, sooner than that. So um, give us a second. I'm just going to say hi to everyone, uh, plenty of uh, regular names and a few new ones uh, in the chat section. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining in again. Um, I want to, uh, we, we had a shout out request uh, and it's something we gladly would have entertained all the way through if individuals were, were interested, uh, but a, a, good, a good whiskey friend and customer of ours uh, and supporter of ours is, uh, it is her birthday today, Dee Fisher. So Dee, uh, raising a glass to you, happy birthday. On behalf of the Whiskey Brother team, we, uh, we wish you a wonderful day, we wish you all the best uh, and, uh, and we share for sure, um, Peter will uh, will spoil you with some good whiskey. So, uh, so happy birthday! Um, I see Dave back online. I'm gonna invite Dave up on screen again, and hopefully, this uh, I think this is maybe fourth fifth time. Lucky. Let's see what happens here. Accepts and connecting. That's a good start. Excellent. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> Can you hear me, Dave? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, uh, who knows what was happening there? Sorry, brilliant. I'm no, uh, sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, 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 no need to apologize at all. Thank you very much for joining us as our as our most special guest thus far. Um, it is wonderful to see you. Uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, and uh, yeah, how how are you doing over there in uh, in the United Kingdom? Yeah, I mean things are things are okay. I'm looking at the window for some bizarre reason. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything, everything's all right. You know. Uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're just being sensible. I'm following kind of Scottish rules rather than English rules. Uh, okay. I, I've still been fairly, fairly uh, cautious about everything. Uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, things things are all right. And everybody's, everybody's finding new ways to get around uh, the extreme changes in in daily life and work and and everything. So so yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I imagine. Uh, I mean, apart from whiskey festivals, uh, I know you're, you know, you're in high demand. You're generally booked out for events and, and kind of <laughs> projects months in advance. And I'm assuming you now suddenly have a, a plethora of free time on your hands. Is that correct? I, I have nothing in the diary until uh, next May. Next May. <laughs> so is that the severity of cancellation uh, on the uh, project? Yeah. Everything's yeah. been cancelled or pushed back. Everything's been pushed back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this was actually due to be a really busy year. Uh, so I'd uh, a book project, a really quite exciting book project. So that's been put on ice because it involved travel. Uh, only travel to Scotland, but still travel. Uh, and also, uh, 
quite possibly some filming stuff as well, which is kind of uh, Amber Light Phase 2, which is more kind of shorter film, TV oriented, and a couple other film projects. Uh, but all of them went on ice as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of here twiddling my thumbs to, to some extent. Does it take a, a global pandemic uh, to for you to have available time and then join us online? So, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Um, but, yeah I, I, I'm getting some research done, uh, you know, get the website up and running, and there's bits and pieces coming in. And I think people are now beginning to get their heads around, around it and thinking about how to communicate and how to, how to talk and, you know, yeah, all that stuff. So. Right, right. And I, I mean, I, I assume uh, you're in high demand for online, uh, you know, events such as this. Uh, I know I've seen you on a few others as well. Um, are you inundated with those? Or do you think that will last for the next several weeks? I seem to be, yeah, I, I seem to be doing this a lot, actually. I, and I'm, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Uh, although I do feel that people will become slightly jaded, shall we say, yeah. with yeah. with the whole with, with the whole zoomy zoomy tasting thing right. uh it's almost like i mean it's kind of the only way we can do it but uh sorry for taking my pen uh but it's almost like going back to where we were 10 years ago uh, which was all right everybody sit down and pick up a glass and now right. i'm going to tell you what you're smelling kind of thing because it's kind of hard to communicate because you can't get you know that instant reaction you can't see people's eyes properly right. uh so I mean that that's kind of frustrating. For it feels like a, a backward step in, in some ways in terms of trying to move the move the dialogue forward about whiskey, but it's the best that we've got at the moment. So I, I think the the question that few of us are asking now, and that's kind of what this week's been about, is how do we how do we take this new form of communication and, and jazz it up a bit and actually make it more immersive, make it more interactive, uh, you know. What, what are the possibilities? So I don't have the answers, but but it's it's, it's that's the challenge. Well, we, we we look forward to what what comes from these discussions in time. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some cool stuff to watch. Um, yeah, I think sure. uh, yeah. From I mean, I, I take that, and I don't know if you heard the the brief intro I did, but in terms of this particular live stream, this is our last episode for a while. Uh, I also feel like as much as individuals enjoy it and there's people watching, it becomes a little kind of fatigued or boring as well. And as you say, a bit jaded. Uh, and so, you know, we rushed to get this together and the thinking is, you know, let's take a step back, let's bide our time a little more and come up with some cooler concepts, uh, cooler content. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I think it's great and it's fantastic what you're doing, it's fantastic what, what, what everybody, everybody's doing. But yeah, it, it, yeah, you do need to every so often. I think just, just from a personal point of view, it's it's surprisingly tiring just sitting there kind of talking to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I, I very much agree. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 yeah. I, I feel like it's uh, at times it's a bit like going into, you know, a, a sort of dreadful office office Christmas party where there's this kind of enforced jollity. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you have to be you have to be incredibly upbeat all the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's good because you know you want people to to feel good coming out of it, and you know we we need to help each other, and you know right. you know encourage each other uh, uh, and treat each other with, with, with generosity and compassion. But at the same time, uh, that, that relentless jollity is fairly tiring. <laughs> and, and I mean, there's times, anyway. <laughs> there's times that I'm sure, you, you, I mean, I'm sure you've experienced this as well, where, you know, you're not feeling particularly jovial. You yeah. know, you kind of, if you look out your window, like the world is burning. But, uh, you know, obviously and, and understandably, you need to get online and be a little bit more upbeat about it. Um, you know, so it's, it's a bit tr tough. And then I, I also find, just from my experience, and please share yours, but it, it's, you know, it's, it's such focused uh, concentration for that duration. Hmm. You know, you can't, you can't falter, you can't pretend to do something else, you can't get up and go to the restroom. You know, whereas if you're doing a, a personal tasting, you know, physical tasting, you can engage with different audience members hmm. and get everyone a, a chance to chat amongst themselves and, and nose and smell. You can't do that online. So hmm. when, when, you know, when I end the broadcast, uh, I'm I'm spent. The best I can do is, yeah. is open up a beer and pour a dram, and that's me. Yeah, it, it's it's really interesting actually. I, 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 this is how I'm trying to get my head around it, really, because you know you, you know you, and you, you know it yourself uh, that you know when no two tastings are the same, and if you've got a room full of people, the first thing you do is you try and work out what the room is is like and what people are wanting to know, and you know are they up? Are they wanting jokes? Or are they hardcore geeks? You know. Right. Exactly. 
you know, uh, and that's really, really hard to do but when you just got people online or, or, or contributing. So, you know, uh, it's hard to get the tone uh, sometimes. Uh, but it doesn't mean we, we stop, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know? Absolutely. So, so uh, moving anyway, on. Anyway, onwards. Yeah. So you, um, you, you mentioned, uh, well, there's, there's a few other maybe, uh, I guess, film projects underway, uh, and that very much I would like to think spells from, or is at least a good introduction to Amber Light, which yeah. is your most uh, recent uh, beautiful yeah. piece of art that you have done with Adam Park. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it, it hasn't been available yet in South Africa, and I know that's the case for many countries. So, I mean, if you could please maybe just give the audience a heads up about what, what this beautiful item that you've created <laughs> with others. What's it about? Uh yeah, the the genesis of it was uh, Adam ran a food we website, a food and drink website, uh, and he came down here to to do a week and filmed an interview with me. Uh, and part of our conversation was kind of around something that I, I've just become increasingly obsessed with over the past few years, which is looking at not just whiskey, but looking at spirits as cultural products rather than just products, you know. For, uh, and, and trying to look at the ways in which they interact with with wider culture, you know, whether that's in Japan or Scotland or you know, it's a matter of fact. Uh, and he was quite intrigued by by this this kind of mad concept and went right. Uh, why don't we make a film? Uh, so that's kind of what the film's about. So it's it's whiskey, but it's it's Scotch whiskey, and it's cultural it's cultural background and how it's contributed to Scottish culture over the years. It's not about how whiskey's made. Uh, right. So we filmed, we filmed in one distillery, uh, and we only filmed in that one distillery because the story of that distillery, which was Daft Mill, uh, the story of Francis, well, that that is why we wanted it. So we actually deal with whiskey production in thirty seconds, and the rest of it is looking at what whiskey has meant to Scotland uh, right, and right. how it has influenced culture and cultures influenced it over the years. So there's music in it, there's literature, uh, there's non-whiskey people, there's as many non-whiskey people as whiskey people, and uh, folks seem to like it. Brilliant. Yeah. I, I, I was fortunate <laughs> enough to, to, to get to see it, um, I, uh, and I, I, it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, I've been in touch with Adam to try and arrange a, a South African screening, so for the South African you know, whiskey enthusiasts watching along today, uh, we're trying to get it here, so um, you know, when the time is right, hopefully we can have an event, whether that's online or in person. Um, but I think, I mean, a very important movie uh, and important subject matter because, you know, you know, whiskey is not just a drink, right? It, it ceased to be a drink. It, it was probably never just a drink, to be honest. No, it, it never was. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I guess for individuals who are maybe new to the to whiskey, you know, and you're taking your first few steps into kind of the whiskey industry, or, you know, as a drink, it may start out as a drink. But as soon as you pick up the back of a bottle and you read about somebody who made it, or you read about a place, uh, you go to Scotland, you realize, hold on, this is, this is, you know, a much larger, you know, item that's ingrained and, and connected to so many other parts of the Scottish culture. And indeed, you know, in other countries, um, Japanese, Ireland, America, etc., their culture as well. So I think it's, I mean, it's, you know, it was beautiful to watch. Uh, congratulations. And, and I believe as well, um, it won, it recently, and I'm going to give you the two steps here, but it won an award, right? Yeah, it picked up the best program, uh, Award at the Fortnum and Mason uh, Food and Drink Awards, which are like the, the, the they're they're the big food and drink awards in in the UK uh, these days. So uh, yeah, we beat Jamie Oliver, which is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, no, it, you know, I mean, it's it, it's always lovely to, to to get things like that and have have, have your work recognised. Uh, and I think particularly in this case, because it was so, it was kind of oblique. It was kind of a left field look at what has become a little bit cliched you know some great whiskey films out there but they all essentially do the same thing uh lots of slow-mo <laughs> what yeah glass being full <laughs> water running uh, yeah lots of water you know all of that uh so you know you, we hadn't a clue how it was going to get, be received because uh and even trying to pitch it to broadcasters and, and streaming uh channels and stuff uh what is it because it's not a kind of food and drink. It's not your orthodox food and drink documentary, uh, but it's not an arts documentary either. It's in this kind of weird, weird middle ground. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, it, it should be. It's, it's going to be online. It's going to be on streaming soon uh, by the end of this month. So I'll let you know uh, when that's confirmed. Uh, but yeah, I mean, all the screenings that we had planned around the world, 
they've all they've all gone. Uh, so yeah, taking it online, uh, what was was, was right. the next logical step? Uh, That's what then, it is. So yeah, so, yeah con congratulations on on that. And then in addition to that, all right, uh, outside of the Amber Light winning a, a, a an award, uh, you yourself won one as well, uh, and that was the Fortnum and Mason. It's the drinks the drink writer of the year. Is that that's correct, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a bit greedy. So I'm getting, getting <laughs> yeah, you deserve more than two. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, the, 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 that that was that was equally lovely. But, uh, because uh, and it was scotchwhiskey.com uh, articles. Right, uh, right. They're on they're on the new website. Uh, but but yeah, they were originally at, at Scotch Whiskey. Uh, so that was kind of yeah, it was kind of bittersweet for it's kind of look, you know, that's what we were doing. Uh, and again, they were slightly oblique as well. So the fact that people liked them, yeah, that that, that gave me a real thrill just to think that you know the judges appreciated a slightly different slant on on yeah. drinks writing. So. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, so so c congratulations. I mean, we, we're not you know being in South Africa, we're uh, you know if, if you've travelled, you know Fort and Mason, um, you know, but it's not a it's, it doesn't have a local presence. Um, so I mean, you can you gave a nice uh, you know I guess. Uh, qualification there in that it's the it's the preeminent food and drinks awards yeah. in the uk so uh, i mean that's a massive accolade congratulations um and well deserved so um i mean then moving on to you 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 mentioned scotchwhiskey.com and you mentioned mm. the new website so i very much want to talk about the new website briefly and, and definitely let people know that it exists uh, and that they mm. should be reading it yeah so uh, that's, um, that's uh, the whiskey manual dot uk yep right uh, i'm actually going to put it uh, yeah. down below yeah. Oh, fantastic. Look at that. Awesome. There we go. So people must go read. Um, uh, you've been you've been generating, as always, some wonderful content. Um, I, I've been reading along, and uh, there's, there's nice short pieces. There's some longer pieces. Uh, I just read the Port Ellen one, and it is, it's it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I guess this is just now the new online repository for, for your work. Well, for your digital work. Yeah, it, it's kind of a... You know, to be to uh, you know, it, it's kind of a short window, to be honest. Uh, also, you know, after Scotch Whiskey closing and other magazines kind of beginning to restrict, you know, the, the amount of copy that, that, that they can generate because of all of this, uh, I just wanted to, to have a place to be able to rant uh, at will. Uh, so, so yeah, it, it, it's been yeah, it's been good. It's been it's been very interesting actually. I probably should have done it ages ago, uh, but you know, I think this this internet thing might catch on. Right, yeah, it might be here to stay, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, it, it's been good. So yeah, I was doing some tasting for it uh, today, and yeah, I, I try and post a couple of things every week. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you, you can just click on click on that wee button. You go into the website. There's a little kind of Mailchimp uh, register. It costs absolutely nothing, and anytime there's a new posting, uh, the the chimps will will, will, will tell you that that it's there. So uh, no. Um, I mean, it, it, if, if you don't mind, I'd love to, you know, because this is this, I'd like, uh, I guess there was a necessity here, you know, after scotchwhiskey.com uh, shut its doors. Mm. Um, I mean, I, and, you know, as, as readers, we're not really exposed to some of the behind the scenes decision making. Uh, I know, uh, you know, I kind of the standard, the, the uh, public stance was that, you know, it wasn't really monetized and it couldn't, mm. it couldn't pay for itself. Um, I mean, it, it's, is it as simple as that? Uh, not that we're looking for any kind of, you know, drama no, it, here. It, it, just it, it, what what the story was. Oh, yeah, it, it was purely it was purely that. Yeah, I mean, it was a very expensive site to, to run. Uh, you know, there was lots of bells and whistles. There was, you know, incredible back back end tech stuff. And yeah, it, it was just yeah, yeah. They, they, it was kind of throwing money down down the hole and, and hadn't been commercialized. Uh, and as a result, yeah, a decision was taken that. Uh, yeah right that yeah. makes sense yeah i mean it was a brilliant site i think what's great is that uh, that content is still online so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean, often I mean, when you're just doing when i'm just doing a basic search on something it it does pop up it is a, a you know a, a, a great repository for for whiskey information uh, so long may it be online at least yeah it will be uh, i think i think there's some kind of legal thing that it's it, it can be up there or, or the, all the content can be up there for for a certain amount of time some okay. of the, some of the kind of back end stuff, like the or the generic stuff, like Wikipedia, which is you know, the big reference thing, yep. uh, that's going to that will probably migrate to another site, uh, and I'll be kind of picking and choosing some of my pieces uh, and just kind of taking taking so it's not not all of them, but, but taking some right. some of them. 
AFC Cinderella uh, at that time. But yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it, it was, well, the site was up for well, about four years, I think. So it was about seven years of work, really. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was, yeah, it was a bit of a blow, to be honest. Uh, but, you know, that's life, yeah, you know, you do things like, <laughs> You know, you have to believe in impermanence and and and, uh, and, and kind of move things on. Uh, yeah. What happens uh, with the ashes? I, I don't know. Uh, will something else emerge? Maybe because the industry liked it. I, I, I think you know, without wanting to kind of rake over those ashes too much, I think it kind of showed how that although it had the industry backing, the nature of advertising and promotion these days has changed. So rather than uh, Distillers kind of going and say, right, okay, we'll create a banner if you're going to advertise with this online, etc., etc. Their whole, their whole modus, you know, their whole method these days uh, is moving away from kind of print and old style advertising into perhaps more experiential things, into more ambassadorial stuff, into influencers, and into whatever. Uh, so, the, in some ways, the model that we had didn't quite suit. The way that they were thinking from a financial support way uh so so yeah so although they loved it they wouldn't back it <laughs> you know, yeah, so uh, it's a great irony right it is a great irony yeah yeah oh it's great yeah we love what you're doing guys uh, we, yeah we don't want to pay for it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um I, I i mean dave so in terms of kind of and uh, not to go uh, last question on on squashwhiskey.com mm -hmm. but um i mean in terms of the I guess legalities to some degree. I mean, the, the content that you generated for the site does that belong to you? Can you copy it and replicate it on your on your your new site? Yes, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I got clarification uh, from uh, on that. Yeah, I'd say you know, can I can I take over uh, my stuff? You know, uh, so yeah, yeah. Anything that I wrote is still my copyright, so, so okay. I, I I can take that across. Okay, uh, brilliant. So, yeah, some will still be there, but you know, as I said, some 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 pieces. Uh, the, there's a couple. Was well, it the, the the two that actually won uh, won the award? The, they're over on the site, and then uh, there's a few other pieces. So some stuff I did for French magazines. It's only ever been French content. So, so, okay, yeah. brilliant. Okay, so then in terms of uh, new projects in the way, I mean, I know um, you know the landscape has changed dramatically. Uh, yeah. you, you did mention you know maybe some other film works, uh, film film projects in the works currently on hold. But is there anything else that you can disclose that you're working on, or that we can look forward to, even if it's next year? Yeah, well, uh, I, well, I finished that, an update. You probably, you know, this is not relevant to to to, to the business. I, I just finished an update to the gin manual uh, because you know gin is kind of flying. Uh, so, so decided so to do an update of that. So that's 80, 82 gins out, eighty two new gins in. Uh, so that, that 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 was that was really interesting actually. Uh, so that's coming out in the autumn. Uh, I was then about to embark on a project. So I did a book about Japanese whiskey, a couple of years of years, whiskey, uh, which is looking at what makes Japanese whiskey Japanese. So it's looking at Japanese craft and trying to get into the heads of, of Japanese uh, distillers and then seeing what their mindset, creative mindset is like. I find interesting parallels. Uh, so I was doing something kind of similar in Scotland. Okay. Uh, but kind of looking more at place uh and just trying to look at whiskey in a different way not really not kind of terroir but but yeah it's kind of yeah it's, it's a funny one it, it's kind of hard to summarize really it's kind of it's a bit of the cultural thing that we're talking about with amber light but it's not right. the film uh it's just looking more more deeply in, into this idea of place and community and the way in which whiskey has been used and interpreted and, and evolved and is evolving uh, around Scotland. So, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's a really exciting project, to, to, to be honest. Uh, and it will still happen. Uh, we might, if restrictions lift, be able to do the, the research trips this autumn, in which case it will still come out as scheduled uh, next year. Uh, and then off the back of that or after that, uh, a complete rewrite and redesign of the Atlas Okay. Uh, it's been a few years since uh, since the second edition, right? Yeah, yeah, and a lot's changed. <laughs> uh, and, and, and to be honest, uh, we, we've been sitting, yeah, myself and my editor, uh, uh, we, we've been sitting for the past couple of years going, we need a new edition, but how the hell are we going to do it? 
uh, because you know, it's 140 distilleries in, in Scotland now. There's yeah. almost 30 in England, and then you multiply that around the world. Everyone, so, yeah. uh, the, the book has to change. Uh, so it's got to, it's got to, the thing is, it's got to kind of continue in the same vein. So the themes have to be the same, but the way in which you approach it, so you can't cover every single facility in the world. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I've got some ideas, but yeah, okay. that's a couple of years. It's so, a couple so of years. Two, two questions on that. Uh, I mean, I, and I, so I remember, I remember seeing a, a, an interview or something, uh, you know, you commenting or talking about the second edition of, mm -hmm. of the, the Atlas. Uh, and saying at that point in time, you know how 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 you know much more has been added because of the the, the advancement in the industry and all these new producers online. And I mean, in the in the last five years, that has nothing but escalated yeah. uh, almost exponentially. So uh, yeah, I think you've got a challenge uh, unless you want the uh, uh, <laughs> manual bronze size collecting whiskey eight kilogram book on your hands. Uh, <laughs> You know, we, we were thinking of doing like northern southern hemisphere or or east and west or or whatever but yeah uh we'll we'll, we'll, we'll find we'll find a way around it <laughs> I, it was funny um, I, I was speaking to my friend uh philip juge who's who is kind of now he, he's he is now kind of head of the french distillers uh, whiskey distillers a, a kind of loose affiliation of french whiskey distillers and i was speaking to him last year and he said dave uh, do you realize there's like 100 distilleries in France making whiskey? I went, oh my God, that's amazing. He went, I've only found that out. <laughs> He's meant to be in charge of it. And he, he, he was amazing. Wow. You know, so, uh, yeah, it's... it's. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's difficult. And I feel like Scotland is easier to keep track of because, uh, you know, there's a lot more, I think, interest in general. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the uh, Scottish Whiskey Association are quite good at, you know, at delivering information. Um, but you know, to find out how many distilleries are in uh, in Australia and Tasmania, you know, it's quite a, it's quite a, it's going to take you a few hours, and you're going to be surprised by just how many they are. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I, Holland's being a good example of that too. Yeah, and, and but you know, thankfully, you know, I've got I've got good friends in 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 these places who kind of kind of tip me off to to what's happening, and you know, uh, just before lockdown and everything, I, I was in Australia and, and New Zealand and contracted. Right. In New Zealand, uh, but but tastes some great stuff in in both countries, um, right. and that's really, that's really exciting. So, so yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll yep. see how yep. it goes. So uh, before we go into maybe some more serious topics, I want to do. Uh, I'm I'm curious about your your uh, I guess creative process. I mean, are you do you have to sit down and and think about well, you know, I I want to do something else. What does that look like? Or are you just kind of always binging in the back of your mind about oh well, that'd be cool and oh like uh, note for myself later let's get back to this uh yeah it's it, it, it's it's a bit of both uh to be honest yeah i i think you've always got to you've always got got to try and push things forward uh i, I was going to use a dreadful analogy and it, 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 it seems to be comparing myself to, to somebody who, someone who was a genius and i'm not uh like you know miles davis you know, Miles Davis never stayed still. You know, I I I don't think any any artist or any writer uh, really wants to stay still. Uh, you can do, and I, I just continue to churn that out. But that's pretty boring. You've got to try. You've got to. I think you've got to test yourself and challenge yourself. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and there's you know there's blind alleys, and every so often it's something something just something clicks. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's always kind of ideas kind of buzzing about, uh, and at the same time, there's there's kind of, yeah, you know, I need to sit down, I need to taste these whiskeys, and it, it's all kind of orthodox, and then, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll start scribbling on a bit of paper. Right, all right, uh, that's that's very interesting. Thanks my for sharing. Years with, with my latest obsession, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what? what I mean. No. It, it, it does come to mind though, as well, because you know, I, I'm 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 unapologetically, you know, and maybe. Uh, ignorantly so but i'm i'm i have i've single-minded focus on whiskey yeah. um and 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 I, I you know it's fine it's a pre personal preference i i that it is what it is uh and you you quite diverse in your interests uh mm -hmm. and and you're well known for it uh being a lot more open-minded than myself and, and i guess many other whiskey drinkers to dabble and try and learn about other spirits and appreciate them um and so i mean kudos to you respect uh it's it you know um but then I would imagine that, you know, in terms of my whiskey mind, it never shuts off. Now, you now have your whiskey mind and then all these other spirits, 
you know, always learning something new and uh, your, your mind must be, uh, you must have trouble sleeping. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's fairly confusing, but, but it, it's nice looking at, I mean, part of the reason for writing about other spirits is like, yeah, I find spirits fascinating, you know, I, 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 as a category. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of looking over here, you know, sort of rum shelf and gin shelf and, and, and stuff. And by, by beginning to study uh, rums, for example, you, you can then see parallels between rum and whiskey and you can see differences and you, you can see the, the commonalities and how histories have kind of uh, overlapped, or, you know, o o over the years. So I think it just, from a writing point of view, it just gives me a wider context to, to, to work in. Uh, I, I think I would find that, personally speaking, I would find it too restrictive from, from, from a writing point of view to only just be writing about one thing. Right. Uh, and I, I think, you know, the fact that I am writing about gin, for example, or you know, look at you know, the amazing and bizarre spirits coming from Empirical in, in, in Copenhagen, uh, that then kind of makes me think about spirits in a different way. And can you apply that to people? Can you apply that to scotch? Uh, uh, can you then apply it to other styles of whiskey? So, so yeah, right. It, okay. Very it, it, it's me keeping it fresh for me, but you know, it's it, you know, everybody's different. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm, but I, I mean, I can very much appreciate the the, the, the approach there. It makes complete mm. sense. Um, you know, I guess <clears throat> I just, in terms of the whiskey industry, I mean, if you if you fairly immersed in it as a drinker, as a you know, as a as a retailer etc as a writer you know it's, it's not as slow uh, an industry as people think from the outside no, um, you no. know a whiskey takes 12 years to make so i'll come back in four years time and let's see if anything's new uh, i mean every week there's updates about either new distilleries or new products or innovation new releases uh, new yeah. festivals it never ends so uh, i mean imagine you know just it's difficult enough as a whiskey enthusiast trying to keep track of all of that you know then uh, yourself as a, as a as a writer of almost many spirits um it, it must be quite uh, it must be quite a daunting task to it, it, it's, it's pretty much impossible uh, to, to, to be perfectly honest uh you know you're just trying to keep tabs on, on everything that's going on uh yeah it, it's you know i think it's got to the stage that, that you kind of go all right I, there is no way i can actually cover absolutely everything and and, and pay attention to, to everything that, that, that's going on but right. but hopefully there is enough uh, out there uh, and then talking to people, getting tips, and going, okay, well, oh, that's interesting. You know, I hadn't heard about these guys, and you know, they're moving off down, down that route. And yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah, we are we're spoiled for choice at the moment. Absolutely, we, we're we're spoiled, uh, and this leads me to, almost to the next topic. Wonderful uh, interlude there, oh. uh, and and uh, so thank you. And uh, you, uh, you, it was it was a recent article on the website um, about kind of the doom and gloom potentially or not. Uh, and a, and a kind of it's a good segue into you know where I'd like to go for a few minutes and not to you know hopefully let's let's make this uh, optimistic and hopeful. But the truth is we are going through some tough economic times with the global pandemic. Um, as we've already noted, there there is an absolute you know slew of new distilleries globally, uh, small independent producers, uh, large you know one, but they're new to the industry. And the question is you know what 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 does the future look like um, with you know the, the the experience that we're going through now. I mean, uh, you know, your thoughts on just, you know, what's the what the impact of the pandemic will be on the whiskey industry at large? Oof, uh, big question. Uh, I think. Yeah. Sorry. I, I think smaller distillers, independent distillers, are in a slightly more precarious position uh, if they aren't fully and properly financed, and if they haven't got distribution deals uh, signed up. Uh, I, I think it's at times like this that you you begin to recognise that how complex the web is between producer and distributor and retailer and and bars and then consumers. You know that that you know, we we turn to tend to think of it in a kind of compartmentalised way. You know, oh, they make the whiskey, they sell the whiskey, etc. But there's a ripple effect uh, across the, across the, the whole of the across the whole of the trade. Uh, I mean, what we're noticing at the moment, uh, certainly in the UK and uh, I think certainly in the US, is that drink sales uh, appear to be going up. Uh, I know you've not been allowed to sell drink, uh, but you know, the drink sales have been going up. Uh, but in terms of whiskey, uh, it's the standard brands. You know, people are kind of buying a famous grouse. You know, uh, nothing wrong with famous grouse. I, I'm a big fan of famous grouse, but that is the top selling whiskey in, in the leading online retailer in, in, in the UK at the moment. Uh, so 
I think in, in times of crisis, people will seek reassurance and reassurance of big brands. Uh, I think we're now in recession and people are going to be holding on to their money. I think the decline of the on-trade and the real challenges that, that, that are being faced by the on-trade uh, on tight margins already are you only allowed to have 50% capacity of your full capacity. Uh, how do smaller distillers and new distillers get talking to people? Uh, if they can't get the glasses into people's hands, which is where bars, bars are feeling democratic in, the, in that way. So that's got to be got around. You've got to find a new way of, of, of uh, talking to people and reaching people. Uh, I, you know, and as I said, you know, if, if I was a new distiller starting up, uh, you know, I, I would want to be very assured because it's an expensive business. Yeah. You know, whiskey is really expensive business. You know, I, I always kind of cast my eyes, but it's a long answer, sorry. But, you know, I cast my eyes uh, back to, to Aaron. You know, Aaron was the first new distillery in Scotland. Uh, it was a long time ago, 25 yeah. years ago. But it was the one new distillery in Scotland at the start of the single malt boom. Everybody loved Aaron. Uh, people bought Aaron, took 10 years to turn the profit. Yeah. Even though they were well run. Cohoman. Everybody loves Cohoman. It's taken sure, yeah. probably two rounds of refinancing, uh, you know, to, to in order to have. And they were superbly well run and everybody loved them as well. So, and I think with so many new distilleries coming along, uh, so many, so much whiskey about to come on stream and people not necessarily drinking more whiskey, uh, I think you might find some falling by the wayside. Uh, so yeah, I, so, sorry, I, 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 I try to be upbeat about this. Uh, I think you've got to be realistic that we're, in, we're going to be entering yeah. a tough time. But it doesn't mean that we, we kind of just go, oh, well, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I think that is a spur for innovation. That's a spur for innovation in terms of product. It's a spur of, in, of innovation in terms of creating new links, uh, especially to the bar trade, uh, probably to retail as well, maybe to direct sales. Uh, I think from from a from a retail point of view, but from, from a writing point of view, we've got to look at new new methods of communication. Uh, so actually, it's a, it's an opportunity for for innovation uh, to try and to try and encourage people to continue to look at the the, the wealth of amazing whiskies uh, which are out there. Uh, yeah. But it's going to need new strategies. But but that's exciting. Yeah. Do you, do you think? Um, and I appreciate it. Is it? It's a tough. Yeah. kind of point of topic or point of discussion you know and and not you know uh, you know under the current circumstances it's hard to have this discussion and be optimistic and you know for, look at the bright future but there is potential and there is kind of an end of the tunnel but i also like you know if, if you've looked at the the, uh, the the turning on of new distilleries both in scotland and globally even pre-pandemic i i was still kind of you know unsettled by it and just thought well you know do, do, there everyone is making more the bigger producers, Glenfiddich, Glenlivet, have, have all up their capacity. Glenord, you know, talking about distilleries that most people, well, yeah. most people know and or don't know, but go into blends. Then you've got dozens of new micro, small craft distilleries coming online. I mean, you know, I always questioned, you know, where were they going to sell all this whiskey to yeah. when it was I mean, ready in five years? No, it, it, it's it's a great it's, it's a great point because, you know, if you look at you look at the, the, the big picture, you know, whiskey whiskey the whiskey category as a whole is kind of moving up. Scotch sales. Are actually in total, you know, slight decline. Malts are kind of going up, blends are kind of going down. But and you've got all this new scotch uh, uh, about to be launched. You know, people aren't yeah. drinking more whiskey. So I, I think we were already we were already paddling uh, in in the in the shallow water of, of a new whiskey whiskey lake. Uh, and maybe maybe this will you'll see some rationalisation, uh, and you'll see people will be taking taking their foot off the gas a little bit. Uh, to try and balance uh, the, the, the the stocks back out, you know the the, the industry's done this before, uh, and the industry's been pretty good. Uh, you know, I, I can see why Fiddick and Glenlivet and everything moved up because you know it was rocking a hard place. You know, suddenly China was taking off, India potentially was taking off, Brazil was taking off. You know, do you lose that market or do you take the chance and go right? Okay, but yeah, but we're going to be optimistic. Uh, so nobody can predict what, what was happening here, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think we will see uh, rationalisation, perhaps, or, or yeah, it, it, I think it's yeah, maybe some of the smaller guys will go. Uh, 
there might be a little shakeout uh, in that respect globally, but at the same time, the, the big guys may be just kind of going, all right, uh, we might not be running 24-7 anymore. We might right. just kind of ease back a little bit rather than closing sites down. Yeah, we'll just kind right. of, you know, yeah. And, and I mean, uh, you know, from at least from my quite limited interaction, much more limited than yours, but, you know, there were distilleries and, and McKellen comes to mind as an obvious, you know, recent expansion, massive investment, and the distillery was, was kind of was designed and built to be able to bring more online in time. So it has the space, um, you know, it was kind of forward thinking to say, well, we, we're not producing, you know, that yeah. yet, but we expect sales and we, we'll, we'll build it so that well, one day we'll put pot stills in there uh, and, you know, crank up the volume. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, you think that they definitely will take the, you know, that type of distillery or those, you know, those type of new initiatives, new capacity increases to say, well, actually, we're not going to run 24 hours a day anymore, seven days a week. Uh, let's take it off. Yeah, yes. we, we'll still produce, but we, we, we won't be producing to yeah. absolutely, we'll be maxing out uh, on it. Uh, so, yeah, uh, but, you know, the, the whiskies are, you know, it was an interesting way that you, you, you put it there that, you know, whiskey is a long-term business, uh, you know, Things move quickly, but it's a long-term business, you know. So, so the, the guys who, who are working now in, in doesn't matter what, what what country, you know, they're thinking five, ten, twenty years ahead. So, so they're 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 already doing this kind of crystal ball gazing as to how much to produce now in anticipation of what demand is going to be down the line. Uh, and I'm I'm confident that the more mature industries have a have a good handle on that. I just right. hope that some of the, the smaller ones that there who perhaps haven't, you know, who've come in on the whiskey boom and, and they'll do really well, uh, will learn that and won't panic and, and, and just begin to kind of ease their way through through what's going to be a, 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 a tricky few years, I think. Right, yeah. Interesting. I, I, I also think, so, you know, kind of, you know, mighty sense, I love your, your thoughts on that, though, is that, you know, I mean, the, the first world economies uh, are probably going to be hit hardest. You know, as a third world economy, or, uh, uh, you know, as an emerging economy, uh, South Africa has been struggling, you know, since 2008. Well, well, we've been struggling for a while, you know, in terms of, you know, domestic growth, et cetera. But, uh, you know, I think, you know, I hope to some degree that, you know, some of the whiskey, international whiskey producers pay more attention and, and give more focus because there's still plenty of opportunity here. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so maybe instead of kind of importing their gin because gin's hot right now, actually, you know, spend the spend the time to uh, to build awareness. You know, I, I think as a country, South Africa has been neglected in terms of kind of whiskey development and, and scotch. Mm. I, I really yeah. do. You know, we've got great products, and there's local entities that are championing the cause. But in terms of the importers and the distributors, uh, you know, there's no love lost. They, uh, you know, they they they're, they're after the money more often than not. Uh, in my opinion, and uh, and as soon as whiskey sales started kind of shifting and gin became hot, cool, we're selling gin now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, it did. It's a real shame because you know I remember when, you know, when I first began get, get coming out. Uh, you know, it was such a hot market, and the whole industry was you know whole Scotch industry was like, oh wow, the sales in South Africa are just like you know flying through the roof, and it's gonna it's yeah. gonna be one of the big you know, it's big pumping market, and then all of a sudden, oh no, you know you know it's kind of. Uh, they were diverted by by say uh, some other country that, that, yeah. that suddenly took off. Yeah, it, it, it's it, that's a really really interesting really interesting uh, uh, analysis that, and it yeah. kind of reminds me of what guys like Billy Walker did. You know, when Billy was was still at uh, Ben Rich, uh, when he still owned that, uh, and and to some extent uh, also Burn Stewart, which is now part of the still. Yeah, uh, the they went well. It's pointless us trying to go head to head with. Uh, Glen Fiddick and, and whoever in markets where they're already strong, right. but they don't have a presence in Latvia. Right. You know, we we, we we can sell we can sell good volumes in Latvia, uh, which will keep our business afloat. Uh, we will look yeah. for markets where, but which are you know not being covered by by the big boys. Uh, right. I think weirdly, perhaps South Africa is now one of those those what used to be disparagingly called secondary markets uh, that. that there is an opportunity maybe there for, 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 for some of these guys. No, no, yeah. no, I think that's a great analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll watch the space. We'll, we'll, you know, let's, let's, let's pick this up again in a few months. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I mean, and, uh, and again with that, you know, I mean, basic economic supply and demand, uh, demand, uh, you know, maybe being steady or even dropping a bit, supply over the next few years just absolutely kind of, you know, ramping up. So, uh, you, know, you know, hopefully that means as well that there'll be some price, I want to say normalization um, because 
Yeah, yeah. 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 Make, yeah, make yeah. whiskey a little bit more affordable to everyone. Uh, get some new drinkers in uh, who who maybe aspire to drink whiskey but can't financially, you know, access it. Um, and uh, you know, you can't just ride this wave because the wave has crashed to some degree or is but unstable. So let's uh, you know, let's let's bring down the price and get more people drinking whiskey. Yeah, no, I I, I agree with you 100. I, I think this this whole scale rush by some distillers and you know this is not every distiller but but some distillers for just for the top end and whiskey is a luxury product etc etc they're going to have to rethink quite dramatically uh, yeah. i think as as the uh, as a lot of markets begin to move into recession you know just going after that 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 one area that that one rich you know uber yeah. super super uh luxurious uh consumer uh yeah i mean they're going to be caught out yeah. All right. Uh, well, uh, yeah, inter it's uh, you know interesting. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. I guess yeah. un under under normal kind of business circumstances, when uh, something like this hits an industry, so you know, let's say the Scottish producers. I mean, you know, the the apart from touch wood, and hopefully it doesn't happen, and everyone you know survives to some degree. But you often see consolidation. So do you think it's likely that maybe some of these smaller distilleries will, you know, kind of pull their resources um, and and kind of you know get under the same banner, the same company, so to speak? Uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, you've seen that in you've seen that in the states. There's a certain degree of consolidation uh, taking place in the states with you know distrib distribution companies beginning to buy up distilleries and make, making little kind of parcels of, of, of independence. So that might con that might continue. Uh, I don't see any of the big guys. You know, I see Pernod continue to buy gin distilleries, but I can't see them moving in and wanting to buy yeah. you know, yeah, I can't see any of the, the major players wanting to buy up or invest in more whiskey distillers and selling it's got you know you know yeah, yeah, Diageo Diageo ain't going to be like yeah you know buy a, a smaller distiller. That that's an interesting it's an interesting one, you know, whether whether you'll you'll see some some degree of collaboration. I think, I think collaboration might be yeah, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I, saw, I mean, there's, I guess, uh, you know, we, we, it's also the, the history of whiskey to some degree, but, you know, often, you know, big international drinks producers who don't have whiskey in their portfolio or they don't have an American distiller or a Scottish distiller, you know, put their money in and pick one up for the for the for their offering. You know, we saw that from uh, from Woodford Reserve uh, or, um, uh, picking up. I say Woodford, it's one of their brands, but uh, picking up uh, the, 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 the Glendronach and the Benreach portfolio, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we've seen. Um, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, I, I, I think you could conceivably see see some of that. Uh, you know, they, they did uh, quite interesting raids in, in into Ireland. Uh, you know, picking up some 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 nice, yeah, some nice additions to to portfolio there. So, yeah, uh, that's possible. You know, would Inverhouse or Distel or something like White Mackay maybe want another distillery? You know, that those kind of medium sized companies yep. conceivably. You know. Uh, you know, would Remy or, or LVMH want to pick up something? Conceivably, they would. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Ian McLeod, maybe. Uh, you know, so, so but yeah, that, that's all kind of yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, it's supposition. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, who right. knows what will happen? How will? Right. Um, the, uh, moving on, then I think uh, if you, I'm quite, I'm quite keen to to kind of. You know, I, I guess it's more of a philosophical conversation, and I don't want to go too de too deep down the <laughs> rabbit hole. Uh, we've got lots of questions from the audience, so we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll we'll get to audience questions as well, if you don't mind. But uh, you know, I, I wanted to. I mean, when when I think of you and your participation, obviously you're a writer, but I think, and I I see you at many of the shows. Uh, we see your work online, but th there's very much the sentiment that you know whiskey is not just a drink, and as we touched on with Amber Light, and very much your you know I guess your motivation to some degree of, for the film but there's this kind of community aspect to it right i mean that's 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 very much what it's about uh, i'm very cognizant of that i consider myself a member of a community uh i, I consider whiskey brother a member of a larger whiskey community um and uh, you know and so in terms of that you know what what does it mean to be a member of the whiskey community you know that, and and if we are part of this community surely that comes with some kind of responsibilities you know, it can't just be a free for all that. Oh, you can be a member, but there's no etiquette, there's no social agreements in place, so to speak. So, you know, I know it's it's very out there, but I I, I have no doubt you probably have some thoughts, uh, and we'd love to just pick your brain for a few minutes. Yeah, it, it 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 does the heart proud. You know, it, it makes you feel fantastic to be part of this community. Uh, you know, uh, 
you know, see how gray my beard is. You know, I I I remember the day. You know what? I remember the day, young man. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you know, I I began writing about booze in nineteen nineteen eighty eight. Uh, you know, so that was kind of the tail end of real tough times for for Scotch. You know, there were there were less than seventy distilleries operational in Scotland. You know, at, at that point, you know, there were still wow. they were still closing down, and th those that which were open were, you know, running part time. It was tough, you know. There, there, wa there wasn't really a whiskey community, and, and if there was, it was really, you know, it was a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. You know, it was kind of weird Edinburgh professors, you know, kind of, well, you know, <laughs> which is great fun. Uh, <laughs> but, but the way in which it has shifted, in you know, if you look from a longer, longer perspective, uh, actually a relatively short time, you know, moving fr from that to where we are now, with tens of thousands of people turning up at, at, at whiskey shows uh absolutely absolutely extraordinary and yeah i mean i, I still get a genuine buzz uh out of uh going to the shows and talking to people and, and finding out you know what they're drinking and uh, do we have a moral responsibility which is i, I suspect what, what you were asking yeah uh I, I think we have a we have a responsibility to the new drinker because uh, we were all new drinkers at one point uh, we right. can never forget that. It doesn't matter how uber geeky we get. We can never forget that the person standing next to us might be at their very first show and kind of going, "What do I do? Uh, uh, where, where, where are the markers? You know, how do I navigate my way through this baffling, the fascinating world?" Uh, we've always got to give them a hand. You know, uh, you know, as we were welcomed, in, we have to welcome a uh, new. So it can. I think one of one of the issues with, with whiskey for, I think probably, yeah, yeah, maybe when I was growing up, uh, it was kind of elitist, you know, uh, for, for a while. I uh, it was kind of considered, you know, you had to know the codes. It was a bit like wine was in, in the UK, you know, people didn't drink wine because they felt they had to take an exam. Uh, right. you, know, you you were kind of. You weren't allowed to drink wine because you know you were from Glasgow and people didn't drink wine in Glasgow kind of thing. Uh, you know you don't want whiskey. You don't want whiskey to be that. You want whiskey to continue to be democratic. You want it to be uh, open. It's open to everyone. You know it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much you are. It doesn't matter what religion you are, what sexuality you are, anything. You know whiskey is there for you. Uh, so we can we can't make it elite. Uh, that and. I get really annoyed <laughs> I, 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 about this, you know, I, I, I get kind of annoyed at, at shows which are just there to show, you know, people just walk about going, I've got lots of money and I can afford to buy all these things for every expense of this. That's not what it's about. You know, I, it's about community. Uh, right. uh, I, I don't know if that answers the question. Really? No, it does. It definitely does. Yeah. I think I'd also want to, you know, and, uh, you know, who am I to kind of add on, 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 on your words, but I'd also... You know, if it's if it's part of our responsibility to be, you know, it, it's about being a community, not a cost system, so to speak. Right? So it doesn't matter how much you're spending, or if you're brand new, or you're 30 years, you know, with knowledge. You know, we're in a community, so it's about sharing and learning from each other. Mm. Um, but then I, I almost want, like, you know, in terms of that new drinker, I, I almost feel like it's part of the, our responsibility to to bring people to whiskey as well, mm. and to be absolutely. a champion for the spirit. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, and and, and part of that is and this is great this is dreadful punching punching on books that that was that was the motivation for me behind the whiskey manual uh you know uh, that 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 was the reason for the manual you know if i was a new whiskey you know a new whiskey drinker uh the atlas would be a bit daunting i think uh and i thought the manual was a way of just giving people in one volume where it came from, how people drank it, and then how you can maximise that enjoyment. Here's some suggestions as to how you drink whiskey. My friend Ervin, uh, Ervin Tchaikovsky, uh, who's a brand ambassador for, for Diageo, really, really put it absolutely beautifully. He says, there is no other spirit in the world where you say to somebody, oh, you've never tried whiskey before. Here you are. Yeah. It's 60%. Enjoy that. And expect them to drink you know, expecting to, to, to drink neat whiskey or, you know, they've been to, they go to, to a master class and you've got half a dozen glasses uh, filled with whiskey and it's hot and it's strong and it's difficult. And 
we've not been good at relaxing it, uh, and and also, and also the fact that, and, I, and I'm as guilty of this uh, as anything. Because I remember again when you know began coming over for whiskey live or, over in Cape Town, Joburg, uh people would always ask me, "How should you drink whiskey?" You know, and the answer is, "Any way you want." Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, and you move on. And then, as long as you're drinking whiskey, I think drink. like, actually, how how arrogant is that? You know, yeah. because they're still standing and going, "Well, that doesn't help." <laughs> what do they do? I, add milk to it? Uh, you know, yeah. uh, so, so and that, that 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 was one reason for the manual, so, saying, "Well, let's see what it look, how it tastes with cola and soda water and ginger ale and green tea and." and yeah, and, and, and whatever. You don't have to drink it like that, but let's see. Let's give people the let's give people the the the, the reason uh, to be able to play around with it because it's yeah. just because it's a fantastic drink and it can be consumed and enjoyed in so many different ways. Uh, and that's also part of breaking down that whole elitist thing yeah. that you know, oh yeah, you have to be you have to be really serious. You have to go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's the, what, what, what's the PPM on this? You know, and you're suddenly talking, it's getting a weird code, and, and all the newbies are kind of going, What are they talking about? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's good, it's good to be geeky, but at the same time, you can never forget who's coming in. Yeah, I think, I, and I mean, it's, it's absolutely a brilliant point. And I think, I mean, I'm, I'm probably guilty of this to some degree as well, even though I try not to be. But, you know, we, I guess as, as humans, we have a tendency to be like, well, this is how I drink it. So if you're asking me how to drink it, you should drink it like this too, you know, because I'm right. It's my yeah. way of, you know, not to, not to realize that, you know, people are in different steps and different kind of yeah. parts of their journey. We all started out drinking in a particular way. You know, maybe you went straight to cost strength. It's probably unlikely. Let's be honest. You forget yeah. where you've come from. You forget the journey you've traveled, you know, and to just actually like, you know, at, you know, be a little bit more, I guess, uh, cognizant of where other people are in their journey. Yes. Uh, yeah. you know? yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you, you're very good at championing this kind of, I guess, flexibility of whiskey. Yeah. You know, I remember one of your books, and uh, forgive me, I don't remember exactly which one, but you, you had some tasting notes of whiskey mixed with green tea because that's how yeah. most of Asia is consuming. Yeah. 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 You know, so, uh, you know, I, th I think, I mean, again, you know, kudos to you. Uh, you know, this, uh, it, it's, it's a flexible drink as well, and why can't it be? Um, you know, no one's saying take Port Ellen and mix it with green tea, and yeah. you know, maybe maybe that's fine too. Uh, who are we to judge? Um, uh, but you know, it, it doesn't just have to be you know in a nosing glass, neat no. drop of water. No, no, no. I, I equally it doesn't have to be, and I, I think this is where people kind of perhaps slightly misinterpreted the uh, the book because you know the the, the greatest <laughs> the great success of the book, uh, and it was never meant to be you know creating new drinks or whatever. Uh, has been this drink that's, that's now known as the Smoky Cokey. Right. The Smoky Cokey was, was, you know, I, I tasted every, every single whiskey in the book was with, also with cola. Uh, and I was doing all, all the, the Isla malts and none of them worked with cola. But the last one I had was Lagavulin. And boy, Lagavulin 16 year old and cola is an awesome drink. Yeah. <laughs> a really, really awesome drink. I mean, for your general I, I, consumer, I, I, though, it's a, that's I, a flat I, I feel I was being heretical for even. You're going, actually, this is great. Uh, but now, now, I mean, now you can get it on on tap in in pubs in Glasgow. You know, right. it, wow. it's, become, it's become this cult drink. Yeah. Uh, but it's not the only way to drink it. You know, and people go, oh, "How dare you mix with the like of the like of it like that?" You don't have to drink it like that. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's sometimes it's good to be heretical at the same time. You know, right. sometimes it's good to, you know, challenge these challenge these norms. Uh, ruffle a few feathers. Ruffle a few feathers. Yeah. 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 Brilliant, Dave. Uh, I, I'd love to go into some um, questions from the audience if if you're happy to do that. Um, yeah. If you still Magic. kind of, uh, yeah. What what may I ask you is in your glass? It's a. Uh, you know, the, this the is you a, it's a Lafroy, twenty-one year old Lafroy. Uh, Very nice. Because you know, because it's me. Uh, no, <laughs> it, it, it's the remnants of, of a tasting I was doing uh, earlier on today. So it's a 21-year-old Lafroy, which is from uh, Single Malts of Scotland. Brilliant. In the UK. Can I, I can I get you uh, can I get you a coke with that? Sorry. Can I get you a coke with that? Yeah, <laughs> it'd be amazing to coke actually. <laughs> uh, I've just bought well, myself. It's, it's, uh, it's an absolute killer. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, Inchgower, Providence Inchgower oh, from Fuchsia's back. 
Um, so Slanger. Salty. Slanger. Um, one quick question for me and then audience questions if you don't mind. Um, yeah. And that's just when the storm clears, what are you most looking forward to uh, whiskey wise and other? Sorry, sorry, I, I missed. I, I, I was looking at a question there. Uh, okay. When when the storm clears, uh, what are you most looking forward to, uh, both whiskey wise and other? Uh, kind of getting well initially getting on with this blooming boot project. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, in terms of really simple pleasure, I really want to go to the pub and have a pint. <laughs> <laughs> you let me know when and where. I, I, I'll, I'll, right. The first rounds on me. Yeah, I, I, I'm being fairly unambitious about this. I, I want to be able to walk about 400 yards and you know yeah, sit down with some friends and have a pint. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, in terms in terms of in terms of whiskey, yeah, it's yeah, the, you know, it's catching up with all the stuff uh, that, that I was meant to be doing in over the past couple of months, uh, and and going up and seeing people's faces again and and and, and trying stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I, I hope those days come soon for you, my friend. Yeah. So um, I, 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 on. The only reason I, I, I was glanced glance across there because uh, there, there's, a, there's a classic comment here uh, from Paul so it's saying mi mixing whiskey with anything is sacrilegious. Excellent. You know, <laughs> let, you know <laughs> let, let's, have a, let's have a bit of sacrilege. You know, uh, if you don't want to mix whiskey with anything, Paul, that's fine. I honestly have no problem whatsoever. But don't impose that on everybody else in the world. Right. I, I wonder here because on that comment it says Jim Murray would want to crucify you mixing whiskey is anything is, mixing whiskey with anything is sacrilegious. So I wonder if he's trying to say that Jim Murray stance. Uh, my favorite comment here, and I, I don't really know the context, but it says Jim Murray, the wrestler. Yeah, <laughs> 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 um, you know, I'm from Glasgow. I could take him easy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, so we've got a question from Vernon that's been uh, upvoted quite dramatically. Uh, I think we may have touched on this, but maybe we can wrap it up in a sentence or two, which is, I want to understand Dave's view on future supply and demand. Personally, I'm of the opinion that the wave of new distilleries and the increased production from the long-standing distilleries will lead to an oversupply and reduce the pricing in the long run. I think we, we kind of wrapped this up, but uh, I think... Yeah, yeah I don't... Exactly. As I said earlier, yeah, I, I think we're we're kind of beginning to paddle in in the shallow waters of a, of a whiskey lake uh, globally. Uh, uh, yeah, I would like to see prices coming down. Uh, I, I don't think it's an, a natural consequence of that. Uh, I, I think one of the, I, I, in some ways, I almost seem to, I'm almost kind of contradicting myself here. But you know, I remember what, what happened. Uh, you know when. The bottom fell out of the whiskey market in the UK, uh, you know, in the, the late eighties, early nineties, which was commodity. Uh, you know, the whole market became commoditized, uh, so prices fell so far that, you know, the whiskey was just cheap. Whiskey has been given away, uh, and it did absolutely no good to, to the whiskey industry at all. Uh, so, you know, in some ways, prices coming down. Yeah, it's, it's good for, for a lot of people, but if, if your margins also come down, right, uh, that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, at the very top end, whiskey has become ludicrously expensive, but I would always still argue that if you look at the, if you think, you, you just pause for a second and look at a bottle of Glen, Glen Fiddick 12 year old or Tasker 10 or whatever, and then think about it and go, that has been in cask for 10 years or yeah. 12 years and look at the price of it and compare that to um, what enjoyment you're going to be getting and how long it's going to last you quite possibly. I know it's South Africa, yeah. probably not as long as it will elsewhere, but it'll last you longer than a bottle of champagne, which is going to be costing you more. Yeah. So, so you can still find incredible, incredibly good value uh, whiskies out there. And that's yeah. not to say, you know, I, don't, I think there's been some mental prices at the top end. Uh, but yeah, you don't want it to become so commoditized that people uh, treat it with contempt. Uh, at the same time, you know, you you pick out the, the whiskies which are still incredibly good value for money. Yeah, I, it's a, it's a very good point, and I, I I try and you know as as a retailer, we, we you know we engage with different customers who have different price points and budgets in mind, you know, and sometimes what we hear from let's just say kind of someone new who maybe is not drinking whiskey regularly and is interested is you know oh well this is expensive. And I think if you put that in perspective, you're like, hold on, you know, I appreciate 
you know, maybe it's if you work out the kind of the unit price of what you're buying with 25 shots, you know, it's cheaper than your parking that you're paying at the mall right now. You know, um, but, you know, people, it, it, you have to kind of do a bit of probing, a little bit of nudging to get someone into that mindset, you know. Mm. And, and this idea as well is that these things take years and decades to, mm. to, to, to produce. You know, I, I always love to say, um, you know, when, you know, if I'm doing a tasting, you're talking about a 21-year-old whiskey, you know, it literally took 21 years to make. You know, what yeah. other item takes that long to make? I mean, that's what it in essence means. You can buy a Lamborghini that doesn't take 21 days to make that is exorbitantly more expensive. It's, all, yeah. it's just perspective and it's all relative. I, I, I also, yeah, I would say that's why that's why you are so important. That, that's why the, the independent specialist retailer is so important because people will come to you for advice and you'll be able to explain that to them. You know, if you walk into if you walk into a supermarket and all you can see is just the price, uh, then you will go, ooh, that's expensive. But if they yeah. come in, you know, and that's why the independent retail trade is so vitally, vitally important to, to continue to get that message out. Um, I may, uh, that's why the own trade is so important. Again, coming back to an earlier point, that's why the own trade is so it's so important because you can buy one dram and kind of go, yeah, I quite like that style, and then come to you uh, and and get get some more information about it. So you know, it's all part of that web. Thank you. I'm, I may I may transcribe that and use it as a testimonial when I speak to my suppliers. <laughs> Dave Broom says we have a vital role to play. <laughs> Oh, and, and and Paul, that's fine. It's not. No, no, no. no I I wasn't saying it's a criticism. Uh, yeah. I I used it as a springboard. Uh, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, next question we've got from Gary, uh, which uh, says, "Not so much a question, more of a demand." We need Dave here for a masterclass. Uh, thank you for asking it. Yes, Dave. Uh, it's been many years since you've been in South it's Africa. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. Come back. Thank you. Thank you. When, I, you, when I, you're I, allowed I, to stay, please do so. I will. Yeah, no, no, I promise, I will. Uh, I think, I mean, no, uh, but yeah, I will. The, the landscape, actually, I think in the last several years, uh, I was trying to think when last you were here, and if I'm mis not mistaken, 2013 maybe? Last time I was there was for World Class. Uh, would have been, yeah, it might have been. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it might have been. But yeah, anyway, yeah, it's, it's been a good few years. But the landscape has, has changed you know, a, a fair amount, as you'd expect in the last few years. So I think there's, there's plenty to come back for. We will play whatever role we can to get you here. We, uh, we to, to be open and honest, we did invite you to our whiskey show, I think, it's, uh, a year or two ago. You were at Tales of the Cocktail in uh, in the U.S., so you yeah. were already at a pre-engagement, but yeah. we're trying. Uh, yeah, no, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. I, 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 shall, I shall return. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I've always, you know, I, I, you know, I love South Africa. You know, I've always had an, an, you know, an amazing time. Uh, uh, you're just you saying know. that because... No, 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 no. I, I, it was always a kind of highlight of my year again when, when in those uh, early days of whiskey live you know it was it was you know a must a must visit uh so yeah yeah i, I do genuinely miss it so so yeah hopefully i mean it won't be this year but but hopefully next year um, good well we we we'll play whatever all we need to to help you get here and we look forward to that that, that eventual day uh we've got a question uh, again from gary saying dave have you tried any of andy's work so that's andy watts from three ships and or baines yet so I'd love to get your thoughts on some of the South African whiskey that's being produced here. Yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know if Andy's watching. If Andy Watts is indeed watching, I haven't actually got any samples recently, Andy. So I'm not really up to speed. Nudge, nudge. Just. <laughs> to, uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, anything I have tried. I mean, I, I remember when Baines was launched, and yeah, that, that, that was a bit of a game changer. That, that just suddenly made people go. I think it made people go internationally as well. Going. Whoa, green whiskey can be can be incredible. Uh, yeah, I'd really like to see uh, what, what else is happening. But yeah, Andy. So uh, for <laughs> to kind of you know, with, uh, last year uh, I think it was late last year, November. Uh, three ships uh, were very kind, and after kind of years of trying to work together with Andy and the team, uh, we got a, a whiskey brother exclusive single cask cool. that we went down to the distillery and chose. Uh, I will be sending you a sample. Uh, since you have a bit of a lack, uh, we're very proud of that. We're proud of Andy and, and what the team do there. So uh, we'll, we'll send you a sample of that. No, no it's, it's some great stuff. Uh, so, yeah. Um, question from Duncan saying, uh, Dave, do you have a favorite whiskey? Do you have a favorite uh, whiskey and rum distillery? And what is your go to whiskey? Uh, that could be a difficult question to answer. Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't do it. No, but you see, if I say there's one, then. Every day, so pile on me and kill me. Uh, no, I, I don't. I, every distillery is special. I mean, that's a dreadful cop out, but every distillery is special. 
every distillery smells different. You know, I, I was asked this question yesterday. I was doing a rum thing yesterday, and one of the questions was, you know, what's the first thing you should do when you when you go to a rum distillery? I went inhale. You know, uh, it's the first thing you should do to a whiskey distillery because every whiskey distillery smells different. Uh, so, so no, I don't. I mean, some I've been to more often than others where I feel, and I, I never stop learning about it. But you know, you kind of feel a bit comfortable and you, you understand, you navigate it. Uh, but you know, I, every distillery is really exciting. And as for go-to whiskey, no, uh, I've got too many. Right. Really. Uh, uh, in, in terms of, uh, and, I, and that's a question I, I wanted to ask uh, earlier as well. But it, this is a good moment. Um, you know, we've mentioned that there's so many new distilleries in Scotland. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, out of those, and I, I, I know you've visited many, mm -hmm. or you're aware of many, and you know, I mean, I, I, you know, if you just had to pick, and, and again, kind of at random, but uh, you know, a few that come to mind that are doing a great job in kind of championing the the, the new. You know, distiller on the block, so to speak. Yeah, uh, Todd of Egg in on Sky, which is down right. south, down Slate, uh, amazing distillery. Uh, and last year they just gave their distillers, uh, who are all young kids and they're all local, uh, and they said, right, for a month you can make the whiskey that you want. Uh, and they went away and they used different roasts of barley and they used different yeast types and some oh. peated, was unpeated and stuff. And it was. Yeah, that's a really exciting distillery. Borders is very exciting as well. Uh, borders. Uh, into, you know, I'm thinking in terms of Scotland. Razi, which again is just off Sky. Uh, yeah. Pretty amazing stuff coming out of there. Arden and uh watch out for them. That They're making awesome juice, uh, which is kind of West Coast uh, as well. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of it. Wolfburn, uh, if you haven't tried that yeah. yet. Yeah. Right up very, very, very far north. Uh, you know, so there's some seriously good juice getting made, and some great whiskeys coming out of England as well. Yeah, so, brilliant. Thank you. So yeah, yeah. Um, well, maybe two more questions, and then, and then we'll let you be on your way. Uh, I, I could spend all, all night here. I, I'm yeah, sure yeah. you don't want to. <laughs> it's, it's getting very comfortable. Um, <laughs> but a question from Hardy saying, "For Dave, uh, a workshop you presented back in 2004 got me into whiskey. It still remains a seminal workshop for me. The classic malts." What is your defining whiskey moment, the one that got you into whiskey and formed the basis for what you have done since? Oh, uh, the defining whiskey, yeah, good question. Uh, yeah, it's a story I've told before, so I apologize if people have heard it before, but it's true. Uh, it was, I drunk whiskey before, I, you know, nicked whiskey from my dad's cupboard and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I was up far north of Scotland with a uh, friend staying with a friend and we were on our way to Cayley to dance. Uh, which is about 30 miles away, three of us driving and decided that we probably needed some liquid refreshment uh, en route uh, and the driver didn't drink uh, and Les and I sat in the back seat of the car and drank uh, out of a bottle of Talisker, uh, Talisker 8 year old, that's how old I am uh, and it was a, that, that was the moment that, that just made me think there is something special about this, uh, something magical, and it seems to talk about the landscape, it seems to talk about the place, and, you know, all that stuff. It was just that moment where, where I went, yeah, this isn't just this thing, but which has always been around, my dad drank and my uncle's drank and blah, blah, blah. This is something magical. Uh, and that was it. Yeah. Oh. Can, I, can I ask, Dave, was it, I mean, was it in that moment? Was it kind of a eureka, or was it kind of a few, a little while later, looking back and thinking, actually, that was the moment? No, yeah, I, I think probably looking back, that that was the moment. But I was already, even then, I think I just left uni. I was probably just, yeah, I, I just left uni. Uh, so I was working in Oddbins at that time. I just started working in Oddbins, which is a, a bottle shop on uh, retailer, wine and spirit merchant. Uh, so I was already kind of entering into that world. Uh, and, I be, and as a result, I began to get more and more interested in whiskey because... I, but so so that was the spark. Uh, did I realise it was the spark? Probably later I realised it was the spark. But but yeah, uh, that was it. Then I met Charlie McLean. You know, he, he was a, a a regular at the shop. You know, so you know, there's a slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, I imagine Charlie would be a good customer. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, we've got a question from Gary saying, uh, Dave, what's your opinion on this hype with Chichibu? <laughs> That's a bit of a loaded question. Oh, well, well I'm interested. In what, what do you think about hype with Chichibu? I think Chichibu is an extraordinary distillery. Uh, I think, you know, 
Uh, I think Ichiro has managed the stock incredibly well, given given the size of that distillery, and given the fact he had to lay down stock in order to, you know, allow there to be releases over over the, the medium to long term. Uh, I think they've hand, handled it very well, and I think it is. I think it make, it's making fantastic whiskey. In fact, yeah, I think it made fantastic spirit from, from day one. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that they've now built a new distillery and a bigger distillery just down the road, uh, I think uh, goes a long way to kind of showing that they are doing the right thing. Yeah, uh, yeah I've got a huge amount of time for Ichiro. Uh, and, and, and his approach, you know, the fact that, you know, all the staff have trained, they're all in their 20s, you know, but they've all trained at malting. Uh, they've all planted barley, uh, they've all dug peat, you know, they know every part of the process. Uh, they've got their own cooperage now, you know, yeah. everything, you know, it's it's holistic. They're working with local farmers. It's it's an absolute beacon of what a 21st century whiskey distillery can be. Yeah. So I don't think there's any like about, about it, but I don't think yeah. it's a uh, Dave, do you, do you have any word about, uh, so the, the, the new distillery, you know, the kind of Chichibu 2, which is just down the road, um, you know, do you have any word as to, you know, the kind of, will that be sold under uh, a particular, a different name? In, in uh, I, I, to the best of my knowledge, no, no, uh, but yeah, who knows? Yeah. Okay. It's interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think on, or to that, if I can just add my two cents, is that, you know, the hype is not created by the distillery. The hype mm. is created by the consumer, mm. you know, I mean, the fact is that, you know, yes, the, the secondary prices on those are eye-watering. Uh, there's obviously a lot of single casts being released that are, you know, impossible to find. And there's enough individuals with disposable income that, you know, want them badly. Okay. You know, so, you know, the pricing aside, and, you know, I think sometimes it's easy to to almost muddy the, the fact that, oh, they're really expensive, so there must be this hype around it. Well, people are willing to pay for it because of the underlying quality of the whiskey, the ethos of Ichiro, uh, what they're doing there. And and again, you know, producing whiskey is, doesn't not cost the same, you know, across multiple distilleries. Yeah, you know? yeah, the fixed costs are considerably higher in Japan. But yeah, yeah, also, you know, just touching on that, I mean, the secondary market, uh, you know, it's a real issue. Uh, you know, kind of going back to Francis, uh, Francis Cusper, Daff Mill, great yep. distillery, yep. another another yep. great distillery. Uh, at Daff Mill, you know, Francis only just released his first whiskey, you know, which was like thirteen years old. Uh, a couple of years back, and I, I was in the pub with him a, a while back, and he he was despairing. He said, "Yeah, I, I honestly don't know if anybody has dropped my whiskey because yeah. it went on the market, it sold out like that, and the day, the next day, boom, you know, it, it's it's on sale for for twice the twice the, the money, and you can yeah. follow the bottles, and they are still going around and they're still going up and up in price." And he's going, "What do I do? You know, do I put my price up because?" Clearly, that's what people think it's worth, uh, or, or, or or what? You know, it, it's a it's a it's a major issue, and I think the Chichibu, yes, it is expensive, but yeah, I think the the secondary market hasn't done anything to help it. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I I'm I'm partially at fault here. Uh, I'm a I'm a massive Chichibu fan, uh, and I, you know, Gary is actually part of the whiskey by the team, so I think he's he's obviously genuinely interested in your opinion, but probably also just trying to you know try and understand my my approach because I. Uh, you know, I got, I was aware, made aware of Chichibu fairly early, you know, when they were still affordable. There weren't many releases and fell in love with the whiskey. You love what Ichiro and his team are doing. Been fortunate enough to visit the distillery and, uh, you know, kind of meet Ichiro and Yumi and Shu and the team. Uh, and I have the utmost respect for them. And, I, and for that reason, I, I'm willing to kind of overpay for a release. Obviously, yeah. I've got a threshold. I can't pay. I, I, I've st I haven't bought anything in a year because now they're, they're just gone. They're, they're ridiculous. Right. But, uh, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, but, um, you know, I, I, to be honest, I think there's way more hype about Kuruzawa than there is about Chichibu. Right. But but that, that that's another hour's discussion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what what about Hanyu then? If we're talking about the Japanese distilleries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. There, there was some good Hanyu. And there was some interesting. Hanyu. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Dave, we'll take two quick questions, and then we'll let you be on your way. Um, we've got a question from Morris saying, "Dave, what's on your T-shirt? We see a skull and bones there." Well, uh, it's uh, St. Pauli, who are a football team from Hamburg. Okay. Punk rock team from Hamburg, uh, football team. They're really, really bad. You know, they're really <laughs> bad. Uh, football team, but but they've got great, you know, great support. I, I I like the underdogs. You know. okay. <laughs> um. Uh, uh, what newcomer in, in in Scotch has blown you away? That's from Peter. Maybe you touched on a few of those. Oh, but, no. uh, 
any anything else there to add? I mean, so you mentioned uh, Rassi, you mentioned um, uh, Darkmall, obviously. Uh, yeah. Borders, Arden American. Yeah, uh, Wolfburn. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think Wolfburn. Everything they have they have put out has just been off the scale. Okay. Uh, I, th I think it's great, and and it's also good to see other whiskies maturing and really kind of kind of growing into themselves. You know, I, I think you know looking at. Uh, look at Octomore, yeah. You know, look at Octomore and uh, Port Charlotte these days. Wow, you know, yeah. Uh, just you know, they were always good, but now you can just kind of sense that now they've you know the wood is right and they're just maturing out, and suddenly the personality is just beginning to to, to develop. So, yeah, it's it's always good going back. Uh, yeah, I think I mean for you know just to kind of you know add to that i mean uh i, I was a big i'm a big aaron fan i am a big mm -hmm. fan i've been i i take a keen interest in, in the new guys on the block you know and it's it's it, i always say to other drinkers is that you know we have this rare opportunity to be part of their journey you know you know the the, the you know hundred that came before them we weren't there when the first release was out yeah. uh you know we couldn't see the developments we couldn't know who you know we don't know who the team was or could visit yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. so you know it kind of feels like you're part of the history that, that that's been made you know, every day. It's a good point. I mean, Lag, a new distillery on on Arden. Yep. Uh, the new make is off the scale, phenomenal, right. absolute phenomenal. And and uh, oh no, uh, sorry, I sort of went over and I was sort of picking up that that's that's from New Zealand. Uh, Arbiki, you know, uh, yep. Arbiki distillery, uh, first first Scotch distillery to put a rye whiskey. Yeah. Other yeah. and it's you know. It's, just a fantastic young rye, you know. So there's loads happening in, in Scotch, you know. Is, um, is, Scotch, yeah. Yeah. If, uh, since you mentioned Lag, uh, is Jim McTaggart uh, dist is he kind of the master distiller for uh, for Lag as well? Yeah, yeah. James is now kind of overseeing. So James kind of he's kind of stepping back. So he's he's kind of retiring really. Uh, so he's he's overseeing production like, uh, like a benign god. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I feel like uh, I feel like he's underrated. Um, I mean, oh, yeah, he's yeah, 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 and incredibly, yeah, an incredibly modest, uh, gentle guy, but with you know, absolute laser precision in terms of spirit quality. Yeah, you know, you know, you, you know, if if you if you go and work with him, you know, you have to get everything absolutely right. He's absolutely passionate about it, and yeah, the whiskies are are phenomenal. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the success of Aaron is a, is a testament to his his abilities. Um, so, yeah. yeah, leaving he's leaving a legacy when he does decide to uh, yeah. retire. Um, we'll we'll take the last one, um, uh, and I think this is a good one, Yaku. Uh, and it's uh, Dave. Uh, on what digital platforms will Amber Light be released? You did mention it will be streaming at the end of the month. Um, is is that uh, finalized yet? Uh, yeah, uh, we just don't quite have the date yet. It's going to be in Vimeo. Uh, so it's V I M E O. Uh, there's a new arts, uh, it says pay per view on, on Vimeo. This is a new arts channel on Vimeo, which is called Burning Bridges. Uh, so, some interesting stuff, mainly music stuff actually, on that. So, it's going to appear on that, but we don't quite have the date yet. But uh, okay. I, as soon as, as I said, uh, as, as soon as that happens, I'll let you know. But when I come over, perhaps we can have an Amber Light party. Yeah, even if we've all seen it, we'll watch it again in your company. Uh, that's uh, that will be wonderful. <laughs> Um, do you, do you feel like one more question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, All right. Um, uh, a question from Grant, uh, and, uh, and I think this is also because, uh, you did have a post on the whiskey manual recently about the Port Ellen 40 year old. Uh, mm -hmm. I recommend everyone read the article. Uh, you went off on a, on a wonderful kind of rabbit hole there. I was talking about some obscure blues musician who only made three records. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So the, the question is, uh, tell us about the Port Ellen Rogue casks. Uh, the older peas have seemed a bit flat. As obviously, Grant is fortunate enough to be drinking some Port Ellen here, um, but it looks like the forty-year-old is back with the bang. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was. You know, uh, I, I, you know, I, I've had some some amazing Port Ellens, but I've had, you know, I, I've never. I, I don't think every bottle in Port Ellen has been absolutely stellar. Uh, th this one is exceptionally good. You know, the, the road cask is exceptionally good. The peat level is a lot lower. Uh, so the inference from that is that we're probably playing around with, with, with peating levels just to say, well, you know, we don't need so much smoky whiskey. Let's see let's see uh, what happens. In the same way that Barora uh, was operating for a while. 
So you can still tell it's portellin, but but because the smoke level is lower, <clears throat> there's some really interesting kind of herbal stuff coming through. But I think the the more fascinating thing for me is that it's got real maturity to it. So the casks, while it's taken a long time to get to this stage, uh, the casks have had a little bit more activity to them than a lot of the other bottlings, which was from pretty neutral wood. Uh, right. And I think whiskey suffered as a result. This one. Uh, I, you know, I, I thought it was I thought it was exceptionally good, but you know, it's not a bottle I could afford. Uh, right? Yeah, nor can most of us. They, they didn't send me a bottle. Uh, I've got <laughs> the audacity. Yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, not, not acceptable. Uh, Dave Room deserves a full bottle. <laughs> there's actually a tiny bit left. Look at that. There you go. For the archives, the little uh, the wee drip. Um, uh, I mean, Dave, on to, you know, talking about Port Ellen, obviously the new distillery is meant to be coming online. I think it was originally later this year. It's most likely next year now. Um, I mean, it's it's all a bit of a mystery, intentionally so, as to how many Port Ellen costs are still being, you know, housed, you know, are still available. Uh, I mean, just your thoughts in general. Um, you know, do you think that we will see new spirit, uh, you know, uh, concurrently available with older spirit, or do you think, you know, just you know, from your industry experience of trying to wrap up the, the old stuff before new stuff comes to market? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't know what the strategy is. <clears throat> I, I think, yeah, I mean, there's a finite supply and, and they're eking them out. You know, I, I think there's probably another couple of projects uh, uh, kicking, kicking away. Uh, yeah. There'll undoubtedly be something when the new distillery opens. Uh, right. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's not something that they, you know, they haven't got vast amounts of stock. You you do a fair amount of work with uh, with Diageo, am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That? I, I do quite a lot of training stuff for them. Yeah. Okay, and I mean, I mean, let's be honest, they're a successful business. Uh, they can definitely mm. help pay you a way to get you here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Diageo, two two bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah, No, I, 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 yeah, I've got a lot of time for for the guys. You know, they they didn't have to reopen Port Ellen Brora, uh, and I think the way that they're doing it and the way they've run all their distilleries. Uh, uh, to maintain very, very individual distillery characters, rather than just going, hey, you know, you, you know, we'll, we'll just run them as hard as we can. Uh, I, I don't, th you know, I really don't think they they get the the praise they deserve for for a lot of the innovations that that, that they've led and continue to lead. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah. That's a, that's interesting. I think also, you know, I there's also there's often sometimes like a, a bit of a market separation. You know, I mean, I know many of the Diageo individuals, not many, not, you know, but a handful. In based in Scotland, based in the UK, uh, and they're, they're they're passionate about whiskey. They're passionate about what they do, but then you've got a bit of a kind of a almost a dissonance between you know, let's say Diageo South Africa, who are too often, in my opinion, about the volumes and about the big blends because that's where they make their money, you know, and we can't get any allocation of you know uh, special releases. Just as an example, uh, and, and again, I mean, to, unfairly so, we say, oh, you know, we we paint them with the same brush. Again, that, that kind of human nature to say, oh, you know, these guys, they, they don't care about it. But, you know, if you go to the distilleries and you meet the individuals that, that work with whiskey, I mean, you know, Colin Dunn comes to mind. Uh, yeah. And, you know, th these people are, are, are magnificent whiskey individuals that are passionate about what they do. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't possibly comment on, on, on the, the state of the sales and marketing team in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Especially. <laughs> Come on, Dave, you're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Dave, I think uh, you've been more than generous with your time. Uh, I could uh, I could absolutely spend hours here picking your brain. Everything you say, I think, oh, here's another 10 questions binging in my mind about what to ask you. But um, it is wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, and hopefully we can get you to South Africa, or at the very least get you back on, on air with the South African community. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you. It's, it's been so, great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, wish, uh, I really wish you and, and your family well over kind of the, the months ahead. And uh, good luck with all those projects. I know myself, and I speak on behalf of the South African whiskey community, will be eagerly anticipating and supporting uh, wherever possible. So cheers and all the best. Much appreciated, guys. Cheers. I, I, right. I'm, I've got a weed nip here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Take care, Dave. Thank you. Who's we'll support Ellen your way? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <clears throat> um, that was absolutely brilliant. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I know we went a little bit longer, uh, and I, but I think it's time well spent. Uh, still plenty of individuals watching, so uh, thank you for your attention. Um, and again, <clears throat> thank you to Dave. And I think uh, we're going out on a high, you know, wrapping up uh, 10 episodes of uh, Whiskey Makes Me Happy Hour. 
Uh, we will be back. As I said, we're just going to refocus and kind of uh, be a little bit more intentional about uh, what we deliver. It's been brilliant. Uh, at least I think it's been brilliant. I've enjoyed myself, but there's plenty of, of there's been great feedback uh, consistently. So thank you. I really appreciate the support. Um, I'm not going to go through the questions, but there, there are one or two quick uh, items to touch on before I say goodbye. There were a few questions around uh, deliveries. Um, and uh, I just want to say, obviously, uh, with current lockdown restrictions, we can't deliver on a Friday. Um, so uh, we, we literally got out hundreds of orders between Monday and Thursday. It was a record week. We had the full Whiskey Brother team, um, you know, with their sleeves rolled up on the roads, delivering, packing. So uh, I just want to send a personal thank you to the team. Um, and that goes across. That's everyone. Uh, and keep in mind, we are a small team. So uh, just thank you. Thank you guys and um and then in terms of your deliveries we're getting them out as fast as they're coming in um and uh there are one or two issues where we're waiting on stock from the suppliers because the the, the suppliers i mean it haven't been able to move stock across the country uh until this week so there are a few items we're waiting for uh, i think we're expecting everything to be delivered uh most of it has there are a few outstanding items that will come in next week as soon as they do we're ready and we'll get your whiskey to you so uh, I just want to send my my sincerest thanks to uh, to the support we've seen, to the orders. Uh, we've tried to bring you uh, some good promotions and some good uh, deals, uh, and we always try and bring you some great whiskey. Um, but uh, we thank you for the orders, uh, and we thank you for your patience and kind of your understanding. Uh, it's unlike us to have any delay. Uh, usually we get something out within hours. Uh, now the delay is a day or two. So even by that measure, I still think we're outperforming uh, – uh, you know, a general retailer, uh, and I think you know that, so thank you. Uh, and then the last point, which is almost quite controversial, uh, is is the odd big black sale, not sale, but launch, I want to say, yesterday. Uh, we appreciate there are lots of uh, unhappy individuals out there who weren't able to get a bottle. I empathize. I am one of those unhappy individuals as well. The truth is um, we knew there wasn't enough stock. Uh, we knew the demand was 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 you know far outweighed uh, the supply. Um, we either had an option to take the 60 available to us uh, or just not take any, and that wouldn't make any sense. So um, uh, yeah, the you know we'll put we'll put the black in the bar um, when when lockdown restrictions allow the bar to open. So hopefully that will give it lots of individuals the opportunity to try the whiskey, and that's what it's uh, first and foremost about. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, we're, we, we empathize. We're sorry you didn't get a bottle to those who did, uh, you know, congratulations and, um, yeah, enjoy open, share it and, uh, and spread the good gospel of whiskey. Um, once again, thank you to Dave. Uh, thank you to everyone for tuning in, watching. We, you know, great participation. Sorry if I didn't get to a particular question or a comment, uh, but we really appreciate the, the, just the, the community vibe to this. Uh, that's what it's all about. And uh, have a great weekend. Uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pour myself a dram so that I can cheers everyone out. Uh, it's rude to toast on an empty glass, but uh, to everyone out there watching, thank you so much. And uh, to Dave, uh, he's probably tuned off and he's back to doing real whiskey things. Um, but uh, we'll have him back uh, if you'll allow it. And just to say cheers and slanger. And uh, we will be seeing you soon. We'll speak to you even sooner.